I'd look at my boat and I'd be like, what the hell, how on earth have you ended up in this 20 foot boat in the middle of absolutely bloody nowhere? I had been in a little boat as a kid, like on holiday in a rowing boat, but apart from that, it was pretty much about it. I lived on this for 49 days. Inside the sleeping area, I had obviously where I slept and goes all the way underneath here. Seat, feet, oars. This is my poo bucket. Sit, squat, hold. Hopefully the boat doesn't capsize while you're doing a poo. And that literally is life at sea. In 2009, I nearly died of a pituitary tumour and um, I wanted to raise money for King's College Hospital to say thank you for their amazing care. And then midway through my campaign, I had another tumour, which came back. Totally classic. I mean, couldn't have written the story if you had tried. When well, my friends suggested I try climbing, I did tell her she was insane. My parents were really worried because obviously I'd had major health issues and I have one and a half arms. I mean, it, you know, being a climber doesn't necessarily come naturally to people missing limbs. I suppose the emotion that comes out most for me was actually fear. Even before I set off, um, I was having nightmares. God, what if something goes wrong? What if I can't do it? What if I fall in? And I probably spent a good half of that journey just trying to get my fear under control. I was really nervous on that first day. I wasn't just nervous, I was actually petrified. I had got it into my head that it was really bad to fall. Ooh. What? Ooh. Confidence can be a huge one for, for many women. I think there's this whole pressure on women to look a certain way and that often doesn't involve being covered in sweat, or covered in mud. Eating takeaway pizza in a Norwegian car park just doesn't get any better than that, does it? I've now got five erratic and constantly changing health conditions. Last year, uh, when I was competing nationally, two days before the competition, my hip dislocated. When I was taken out of bed after a nap, it took me six months to feel comfortable on a wall again. I mentally lost my mojo. There was one incident where Essentially, I got my foot stuck between a log and a uh, piece of dead wood. And literally six inches under my bottom um, was something called the Labaria snake, which is known for its fast, swift and deadly attacks. Um, next thing I know, Jackson, one of our guides, is over me with a machete and he macheted it to death. I just looked at him and said, Jackson, why did you kill the snake? He said, Pip, if I didn't kill the snake, it would have killed you. There was definitely a time when I was lying in my bed and I couldn't wake up. I don't know if that was partly because of my... So I had a brain surgery before I left, like six months before I left, and my hormones were all a bit like... I kind of got over it, but there was a, there was a few tears about that. that was not, it wasn't so much fun. I distinctly remember getting to about the halfway point, so just after I had reached Germany, and my body had just had enough, and I was actually just getting more and more tired, more and more over the whole thing and I still had four more countries to go. Oh, you get tired. Rain, 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 hills, rain. Ah! My time spent outdoors and taking on these solo challenges has made me such a stronger and more confident person. Three years ago when I started climbing, I was struggling to walk to my tube station. It was a seven minute walk. And yet today, despite all the health issues that are still knocking me back, I'm stronger than I ever am before. And climbing keeps coming back and reminding me that it's worth it. It's just, it's amazing. And that is, it's a constant high. Boom. <gasps> it's my first V0 V5. Um, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of big. <laughs> oh my God. A tough woman for me is somebody who has a dream or a goal and no matter what, doesn't let that get lost. If you can go through childbirth, you can probably go through anything, can't you? It's being brave enough to live life on your own terms. It's being brave enough to stand up for what you believe in. And it's just being brave enough to own your own space.
<laughs> you can deal with men. <laughs> you can deal with anything. It doesn't matter how much energy she needs to put into it. It doesn't matter how brave she might need to be. It's about saying, I need help. Can you teach me? Coming out the other side of whatever it is that's difficult makes you tough. Even if you have a little cry along the way or people help you, you've still made it through. She still gets back up and she carries on looking for it.